Hi there, I'm Joe N2OUV, and here's a video about my TNT transmitter. Uh, this was built about a year or so ago for the uh, AWA Old Time Contest, and I have an interest in early ham radio and the early gear. So this was really a neat project. I uh, used all period parts to build this. Uh, this is something an enterprising ham would have built uh, again in the late 20s, early 30s, and uh, with the depression going on, commercial gear was quite expensive, hard to get, uh, and usually uh, these were built pretty easily with a handful of parts. Uh, as you can see, um, I have this mounted on an oak baseboard, which is routed. Typically, you just use an old breadboard as your base for this. Have the uh, Brown beehive insulators here. You know, and back in the day, there's wall standoffs, Fried Eisman Bakelite dial, Joule meter, vintage meter. I'll give you a view looking down onto the transmitter, and you can see really how simple this is. And you'll note the plate the antenna coils are made out of copper tubing, nothing fancy. And we're using a uh, 245 tube here commonly known as the 45. Uh, it'll put out about 2 watts with this tube. DCC wound grid coil here. This is a freshman grid leak. Uh, these things were really never that good to begin with, so this one I have a modern cap and resistor uh, stuffed inside. Uh, don't tell though. <laughs> that definitely makes the rig work much better. Uh, DCC wound plate choke here. See them vintage mica caps. Uh, looking back in here you can see the filament resistor. Uh, that was a little tricky to make. That was a uh, resistor that I had unwound and rewound to get the correct 50 ohms on each side of the tap. Uh, definitely tricky to make. Uh, but it does work. It works pretty well. Old Cardwell variable here. And this being a self-oscillated transmitter, you have to be very careful with tuning it. And these kind of really fell out of favor once uh, crystals became cheap enough and uh, easy to get a hold of. Because uh, these, these really do not sound too good if they're not tuned properly. And I think one fellow put it, these, are, uh, these TNT transmitters are TNT in the hands of someone inexperienced. And since this is only putting out 2 watts, it's not too bad. I don't know if I would really want to build something that would be putting out 100 watts like this. Probably not a very good idea. But it is it is pretty decent. And, uh, and it works pretty well. And we'll uh, I'll uh, key this thing down so you can, you can hear how it sounds. And I'll explain about tuning it. I do have it pre-tuned already. If you notice here, the antenna coil is not coupled very tightly. That's really where you want to be. Uh, you don't want to couple it tightly and try and squeeze out uh, as much power as you can because that's going to that's gonna hurt your signal. You know, it's better to back off, make a little less power, and have a good good clean note. It also helps have a very good regulated power supply with this. I'm using a Heathkit PS4. It gives me a nice, stable, well-filtered DC uh, plate voltage. That's, that's very, very important with these. And also, you have to monitor your output of this in the nearby receiver, which I'm going to do here. You want to make sure that this thing is, is putting out cleanly. Uh, also, another point with this, you want to mount it away from your operating table. See if you notice I have it mounted here high up on a shelf on the wall um, to kind of isolate it from the operating table because uh, as I'll show you in a minute this thing is very susceptible to hand capacitance and so forth. So let's uh, let's make some some CW here and I'm going to get a little bit away from this thing so we don't uh, cause any hand capacity. This is going into a dummy load right now.
Okay, so that's that's how it sounds. And uh, here's a demonstration of how hand capacity really affects these. I'm just going to throw my shorting bar in here. And see, any little wiggle, any little shake will really throw this thing out of whack. So, very important. Even I could even put a foam pad under it. But uh, it's really not too bad unless the kitties are running around upstairs and shake the wall a little bit. And, uh, you know, normally, normally it's pretty good. So that is my TNT transmitter uh, replica from the late 20s, early 30s.